Okay, so in this um, section, we're going to do problem solving in a more elevated way where we're going to um, use estimation. We have to maybe look up some our dimensions and units. So it's just a lot of um, problem solving and steps. But we're not going to use algebra, and I know we're so used to setting up tables and X and Y and all that stuff. It's just not that way. Like, we're not going to be in a grocery store, like, for example, like with bulk pecans right here, <laughs> and start doing systems of equations. We're just not going to do that. And we want to be more realistic about it. So we're going to go ahead and follow these steps um, where you have to, like, kind of uh, we're going to like critical think, right? We want to know like what we have, what we need, uh, how do I calculate, how do I, am I multiplying, divide, you know, so we just kind of want to brainstorm a little bit. And so the process is here in the steps. Like we always say, well, what is the question? What am I, what am I trying to find here? Um, we work backwards sometimes. So if we have to, um, and then if we see that information is missing, don't sit around and twiddle thumbs, go out and find it, right? You have Alexa, you have Siri, you have Google Assistant. Some of you actually have real life people assistants, right? You have to go look for it. <laughs> and then we can solve the problem. So in this case, um, a grocery store has bulk pecans on sale, which is great since a baker is planning on making 10 pecan pies for a wedding. The recipe calls, so one, re one pie's recipe calls for one and three fourths cups of pecans. But when I go to the bulk section to purchase the pecans, it, everything's in pounds, right? There's no measuring cup. So the baker runs over to the baking aisle and finds bags of pecans. So they go actually to find a proprietary bag of pecans and flip it over and look at the nutrition label. So in this case, um, it doesn't, it's not very cost efficient for a baker who's going to bake 10 pies to just buy individual bags when they need a lot. They need bulk and bags and bags, right? So here we're going to look at the nutrition label and we do notice that it doesn't give us anything in pounds, but it gives us in grams. So since we need pounds of pecans, we're going to somehow need to convert cups, grams, something to pounds. Um, I Don't worry about the fact that it says pecan halves. That doesn't matter. They're just all the same. There's still 99 grams of pecans and just cut in half, right? Um, all we need to take from here is the fact that one cup is 99 grams. Okay, so let's go ahead and write these things down. I think the first step should be identify the question, like what are we trying to find? Identify the question. Okay, so the goal is to find the number of pounds for 10 pies. right? The number of pounds of pecans for 10 pies. The next it says work backwards, identify inf the information needed. So um, the second part would be to um, identify or like um, identify uh, information. Okay, so to identify the information, all we know is that one pie needs one and three-fourths cups of pecans. The other piece I know is that one cup of pecans is equal to 99 grams. Okay, cool. And the other part is that we know that we need 10 pies, right? So. The third part says now um, identify any mis missing information. So step three is just continue working backwards. So step four is the one where we're going to have to identify what we're missing. Well, somehow I have to get from cups to grams 
to pounds. So I would need to know, um, so identify missing information. So I do need to know um, how many pounds or one pound is equal to either grams slash cups. So after Googling or Siri um, and finding out how many pounds in a gram or a cup, we would find that one pound is equal to 454.55 grams. So we won't be using the cups. So um, this is great. So we know that 454.55 grams is equal to one pound. And we know that 99 grams is equal to one cup. We know that there's one and three-fourths cups for one pie. So I think we can actually now solve the problem. So let's go ahead and solve. So let's go ahead and find the number of pounds in 10 pies. Okay, so we first start with the fact that um, we need 10 pies, and for each pie, we need one and three fourths cup of pecans. So three fourths is three quarters, which is 0.75, so I'm just gonna change it to 1.75 cups per one pie. The other part now I'm gonna grab is the fact that one cup is for every 99 grams. So 99 grams per one cup of pecans. And then I do know that 454.55 grams is one pound. So one pound per 454.55 grams. So just looking at this now, it's really big, right? We're putting like this one is putting everything that we just learned from one one to one three together, right? So let's go ahead and reduce out some units. We see cups and cups, pies and pies, grams and grams, and all we're left with is pounds and some product in the numerator and denominator. And I'll go ahead and put this over one so you can see numerators and then denominators. And so we have 10 times 1.75 times 99 all divided by one times one times one and then 454 times 55 and then pounds. So go ahead and put that in the calculator and we get 10 times 1.75 times 99 divided by 454.55. And we get three point, and I'll round to the nearest um, hundredth, so um, we can see that one is below five, so we have 3.81 pounds. However, so now the baker knows they need 3.81 pounds of pecans, right? Well, are they gonna go up to that scale that's a, that's a, you know, that circle and they're gonna go every like eight? No, they're gonna probably get how many pounds? They're probably just gonna go to the nearest whole number, right? Because you're just like taking the scoop and putting it in that bag and weighing it. So really we would say that the in real life, right, the baker needs about four pounds of pecans. Okay, 
it just depends on what the problem wants. So if it wa if you want a round and 3.81, that's fine. And, so, and in conversation, we say about four pounds. So either way, it just makes sense. Um, the next part is actually, um, you know, we always have that situation when you're like, oh, I don't want to drive that far just to get a discount. Is it worth it? And even though it may be worth it in cost, we need to take in consideration our time, our money for gas, our car, right? That distance that we travel to get that discount. Because I do know some people who travel a little bit farther to get a bigger discount like at Walmart versus just going locally to their target or something. Um, and it just depends. So this is about chicken and going to like a neighborhood store which may be like a Whole Foods versus a Walmart buying chicken, which is farther away. Okay. And um, so you need to buy some chicken for dinner tonight. You found an ad showing that the store across town has it on sale for three oh nine a pound, which is cheaper than your usual neighborhood store that sells it for three thirty nine a pound. So it's 30 cents less per pound. Is it worth the extra drive? And you're like, well, how far are you driving, right? So well, there's some things we need to know, right? We need to know, well, how far is it from my house, right? So, um, and how much chicken are you buying? If you're buying one pound, then it's not worth it, right? So how much chicken will you be buying? Five pounds. How far are the two stores? So my neighborhood is only 2.3 miles while um, the store across town is eight and a half miles. So it's about a seven minute commute versus 24 minutes. Your time is precious. How can kind what kind how kind of mileage does your car get or what I'm sorry it should be what kind of um, what kind of mileage does your car get about 25 miles per gallon how many gallons does your car hold 15 how much is gas right now it's 359 a gallon. So the, doesn't mean you're, are you going to use every single piece of this? No, you're just going to see if it's worth the extra drive. Um, some people's time is b more valuable than 30 cents a pound. Um, some people, it's time is every time is there's no object of time, but object of money and some saving the money is more important. So it's really about perspective. So let's go ahead and get a few perspectives from all this. So I think the first thing is we want to see how much we're going to pay in the chicken, right? Pay not for the chicken. Okay, so we're gonna have two pieces here. So let's let's do the um, neighborhood store. Neighbor. And then the um, cross town. Okay. Okay, so the first thing we want to know is how much chicken. Well, no matter what, we're doing five pounds. Second part is what is the cost? So we have five pounds. So LBS is the abbreviation for pounds. So I know it looks, it's different LBS for pounds, but it is LBS. <laughs> and we're gonna multiply it by that cost. Well, the neighborhood um, market had it for 3.39 a pound. Which gave a price of five times 339. Uh, 1695 so here five pounds times the across town which you're supposed to save money which is 309 per pound that will give you um, five times uh, 309 which is 1545 
So we already know that it's going to be cheaper if I go across town, but really we need to now see if it's worth it, right? So the next piece would be as, um, well, how much of how much in gas am I paying? So let me do that in a different color. How much gas am I spending? So here, how much gas? Well, that's going to be the same for both. So the thing we would need is um, that we would be going to, from the neighborhood store. We're 2.3 miles away times um, how many mileage? I get one gallon per 25 miles. So one gallon per 25 miles. Okay. And then, um, and I need the cost per gallon. So the cost per gallon right now is 359 per gallon. Okay. So if I went ahead and did that, um, notice things reduce out except for the cost right? 359. So we'll have 2.3 times uh, 1 times 359 divided by 25 miles. So we get 0 0.33028. Um, so that's the cost, but this is only one way. Don't forget 2.3 miles is only one way to the store. I got to get home, right? So this is going to be uh, twice, right? So let me multiply this by two. And I can see now that it's going to actually cost 66 cents to go to and from, from and to the store, right? <laughs> So it would cost 0 0.66056 for both ways. Okay, so let me star that and I'll star this. Okay, and so um, for a cross town will be the same exact thing except now that um, we know that it's eight and a half miles away. So eight and a half miles and then times right the same thing about the car so one gallon per 25 miles times 359 per gallon and so if i do that in the calculator it's essentially the same exact expression right except that it's eight and a half miles so eight and a half times 359 and then divide by the 25. so we get 1.22 Oh, 06 but this is again only one way so for both ways it would be times 2 so 244 2.4412 for both ways to and from the store okay so now we have all the pieces we need right here's the cost of the total cost of the chicken Here's the cost in gas to go to and from the store, you know, home. And if we add those, now we can find the total cost. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me extend this a little further. Okay. And then, oh, let me do it in green. So a different color. Okay. And then what is the total cost? Okay, so it would be 1695 plus 0 0.66056. So 1695 plus 0 0.66056. Oops. And at this point, I'll round to the nearest cent. Right, it just makes sense. So we see that that third decimal is zero, so it'll be 1761. Okay, so for um, a cross town, we'll have that total of 1545 
plus both ways for gas, 24412. And let's go ahead and add that. So 1545 plus 2.4412. And we get 17, rounding to the nearest cent, That again, that uh, third digit is 1, it's less than 5, so it'll be 1789. So the total cost for neighborhood is 1761 and then for the across town is 1789. I mean that's cutting it really close. But if you did want to save money, then of course the neighborhood store would be cheaper cuz gas is so high. In fact, we could probably tell just because the price of gas per gallon was more than the price per pound of chicken. So um, it made going shorter distance cheaper than going a longer distance because this cost per gallon was more than um, the cost of the chicken. So even though the chicken was cheaper, the mileage was going to get you. Um, so it just seems that this one um, is the... In this case, the neighborhood store is cheaper by and then we could see if I subtracted 1789 minus 1780 um, 1761 we see it's by only 28 cents by 28 so I don't know I mean it just depends like how much you want to save like if you felt a dollar was enough then you probably would want to drive farther but in this case if you're it's still if it's closer that means you're going to save more time and if it's cheaper to buy 28 cents you might also just go to the neighborhood store okay so um it, but if we look at now, let's just say, no, 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 I don't really care about the cost, Darlene. It's, it's my time that's most important, right? My time is of the essence. I don't got time. I got to be like, okay, so how much is it costing you per minute then, right? So then we could say, well, what is the cost per minute? No, this is funny because you're like, what? I'm like, well, my time is precious. I ain't going to spend time. I want to see how much it's costing me per minute as I'm going to go get that chicken. You know what I'm saying? So if you do that, you'll just take the total cost of 1761 and divide it by um, how long it takes you to get there. So how long does it take to get to the neighborhood store? Um, it seems that it will take me seven minutes to the neighborhood store. So let's go ahead and divide that by seven minutes okay so if I did that 1761 divided by seven minutes that would cost me two dollars and 52 cents per minute okay now if I did the um, across town I would do 1789 the total cost divided by how long it takes me to get to the um, across town store. So here I see that it's eight and a half miles away and it takes 24 minutes. So let me divide that by 24 minutes. And let's see how much it costs me per minute. So I'll do 1789 divided by 24 minutes. And here it's going to cost me point, and then rounding to the nearest cent, um, we could see this third digit is five, so five or higher will up this by one, so 75 cents a minute per minute. Okay, so for fun, we can see that here it's going to cost me more per minute than going to the neighborhood store, but you are going farther, farther so you're spreading that money in more miles right so um it, if your money is more val i mean if your time is more valuable um definitely seven minutes 
you definitely want to do and it's cheaper but it does cost more per minute because you're going a shorter distance for that same cost around that same cost so 